Call to order for Monday, February 27th, Advisory Plan Commission. First order of business is approval of minutes. We have a motion to approve the minutes by Monica. Second. Second by Mr. King. Please uh, show of right hands on approval. Quick question. Oh. Right. What's customary here? Do I abstain or do I vote? Rules allow you to vote. If you okay. wish. You do not have to I've vote. seen it done either way. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, that's quite all right. Uh, all in favor, please show right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Eight zero. Uh, are there any special requests or continuances? There's someone online with a special request to continue. Okay. You may go ahead. Yep, this is uh, Justin Olaszczyk with Scannell Properties. Um, and we are requesting a continuance to the uh, March 27th plan commission meeting for our Worstville Commerce Center phase two primary plat. Um, we are uh, pursuing a primary plat amendment to our Worstville Commerce Center uh, phase two primary plat um, to accommodate a uh, tenant. And we are requesting the continuance to give them um, another month uh, before we move forward. Okay. See 2023 Peace. 002. Yes. Is there a motion? Is there a motion? Motion by Monica to continue. Second. To the date of March 27, 2023. Okay. Well, Mr. Walker, second. All in favor of this continuance, please show your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 8 0. We will continue PC 2023 02, the Worstville Commerce Center. Uh, primary plat uh, for the final plat change to March 27th. Thank you. Okay. Uh, is there any old business? Seeing none, is there any old business from the floor? Seeing none, new business. First item is a public hearing. It's PC 2023-01 Shiloh's Corner Primary Plat. Uh, so there's anyone here to speak for this, please come forward and be sworn in. Eternal Come on the podium, we'll have 15 minutes. To speak on this, <clears throat> and the administrator will have 15 minutes, then we'll have five minutes of rebuttal for both groups. Get state your name and address, please. Uh, Derek Snyder, Crossroad Engineers, 115 North 17th Avenue, Beach Grove, Indiana. I'm here on behalf of uh, Amanda Cunningham Johnson, the property owner, and Cunningham Restaurant Group to request primary plan approval for PC 2023-001, Shadows Corner. Property is located in the southwest quadrant of uh, Greenwood, more specifically in the northeast corner of the Stones Crossing Road and Galena Drive intersection. The property in question was actually rezoned to the commercial medium uh, in 2021. Uh, the approved ordinance number was 2143. Uh, there were some conditions associated with that which have been uh, incorporated into the primary plat. Adjacent land uses, uh, the bar at Bay Horse Inn, which is actually owned by the petitioner, is located to the north. Uh, residential, single family residence to the east, which is also owned by the petitioner. Uh, the short crossing commercial subdivision to the south, uh, in addition to the CRG apartments that are currently under construction. And to the west, it's a uh, vacant piece of property that I believe is owned by St. Francis or Franciscan Alliance. Uh, to the northwest of the property, uh, subject for 
site, excuse me, is the Copper Chase Apartments. Uh, currently, the site consists of a single family residence and a uh, horse barn. Post subdivision will consist of three commercial lots and a common area. Uh, Stormwater retention will be provided for all three commercial lots. All stormwater will be routed into the pond and then discharged into the private storm sewer along the Lena Drive uh, to the west. Drainage patterns uh, will be maintained from existing and proposed conditions. All necessary utilities will be installed uh, in accordance with city standards. Uh, access to the site will be taken off of the Lena Drive in accordance with the report commitments for the rezone. This time I'd be happy to answer any questions. Is there anybody else here to speak in favor of this? If not, are there any remonstrators here? Seeing none, close public hearing. Commissioners, any questions? Seeing where we have favorable, yes, um, this staff was favorable of this petition uh, for the primary plat, stating that it meets our subdivision ordinance. Uh, they did have to work through some variances with the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, those have been taken care of and approved. Uh, they're approved two, two weeks ago, I believe it was. Uh, so they're all good on uh, the planning side of things. I'm here for any other questions. Okay. Seeing no other questions, Chair will entertain a motion. <clears throat> I'll turn it on. <clears throat> I move to approve the proposed primary plat of Shiloh's Corner Commercial Subdivision submitted by Crossroad, <clears throat> excuse me, Crossroad Engineers PC on behalf of uh, Cunningham Restaurant Group and Amanda Cunningham. I'm sorry. Um, docket PC 2023-001. Subject to the Technical Review Committee condition that all staff comments are addressed because the primary plat complies with the standards and the Unified Development Ordinance Subdivisions Division and to direct the President to sign on the Commission's behalf the Notice of Determination and written findings regarding the approval of the primary plat as prepared by the Planning Director. Motion is there a second by Mr. Walker. Any last comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor, please show by showing your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries 8 0. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Next item of new business on the agenda is PC 2023-009 zone match. Um, I believe we have one comment. I have to step out. Okay. So you guys have a very good place. Do you have a letter to the item? We do the landscape. Okay. Here. So I'll just step out and then come back. We'll make sure that you're aware when we finish. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep it warm. <laughs> This is a public hearing. Uh, all those who uh, will be speaking in favor of this, please raise and uh, be sworn in. Hey, can you uh, give us your name and address? Sure. Good evening. My name is Mike Tenko. I work for Kenley Horn. Uh, civil engineering firm at 250 East 96th Street, Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, I'm here on behalf of Unicorp National Development this evening, and we also have Sean Adams on the, the, the virtual line as well if needed. Um, we also have Krista Taggart with Enders Hauser um, with us in the room tonight as well, um, as Enders Hauser has been a supportive partner in the, the early stages of this development as well, um, as it's immediately adjacent to the property. So. Um, I have pulled up on the screen here the vicinity map of where exactly the subject property is. Um, so this is at the southeast corner of US 31 Worsfield Road. The highlighted area shown on here, the yellow highlight, is a 70-acre parent parcel 
uh, that's under one ownership currently, uh, but as noted, Unicorp National Development and Enders Hauser are in partnership on how to develop that 70 acres. And so the petition this evening that we're requesting is a rezone of approximately 33 acres of that 70 acres. And so that 33 acres would be the west half uh, of the, the 70 acre parent parcel, the part that actually fronts US 31. Pull up another image here that will help demonstrate. So the red area shown on the screen currently, those are those compromise the, uh, the 33 acres that we're talking about. And so you can see we're actually requesting um, to rezone from the existing industrial large format zone um, and to break that into two commercial zones. The north 11 acres would be the commercial medium format. And then the south approximately 22 acres would be the commercial large format. Um, so I'll also go ahead and touch on the different criteria uh, that we believe justifies the zone map change. And so in regard to the comprehensive plan, um, while the future land use map and the comprehensive plan shows the entire 70 acre parcel to remain industrial, uh, given that the, given the US 31 frontage, we believe that a commercial zoning is appropriate. Uh, the commercial development has the ability to act as a transition buffer from the US 31 corridor over to the advanced manufacturing district to the east. Um, the eastern half of the 70 acres parcel is to remain industrial as previously noted. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit next about the surrounding areas. So in regards for the second criteria, the current conditions and the character of current structures and uses in each district. Um, so at this time, the parcels to the west, to the north, and several of the parcels to the south of the subject property are all zoned commercially. Uh, on a larger scale, looking at proposed use, it's consistent with those along the US 31 corridor as a whole. Um, the intent is for the proposed development to be complementary to the existing Anders Hauser campus that is to the east of the subject property. Um, the proposed uses have the potential to make the Anders Hauser campus an even more attractive employer at this campus. The third criteria regarding the most desirable use for which the land in each district is adapted. Uh, the proposed use meets the intent of the comprehensive plan and current uses in the area are compatible with the proposed development. Uh, creating more options for retail, dining, and professional services yields the most desirable use for uh, nearby residents and working professionals. For the fourth criteria, the conservation of property value throughout the jurisdiction, uh, we stated that the use of the adjacent properties would not be negatively impacted because approval of this petition and its proposed uses is consistent with development of the area. Uh, landscape buffers and water detention areas that comply with code, um, which would be part of the development to minimize any effects of adjacent properties. And then finally, for the uh, statements regarding responsible development and growth, uh, we believe that, that the marketplace has clearly shown that the Greenwood is a desirable place to work and live, which creates a higher demand uh, for commercial services and development. So the proposed development is consistent with the surrounding areas and creates complementary uses for nearby users. Uh, we did read the, the staff report and agreed with with a lot of the comments made in there. Um, and as far as the five conditions, we are also agreeable to those as well. Um, so happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor? Krista Taggart, Greenwood Community Development Board. Thank you. 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 I um, want to thank you all for your consideration today. As Mike indicated, Henderson Hauser is the immediately adjacent property owner. Henderson Hauser is strongly in support of this fee zone. Uh, as Mike indicated, this land is currently held by one owner um, and they would like to sell it as one 70 acre parcel. Uh, Anderson Hauser is currently landlocked in our ability to expand. Um, we have been able to partner with Unicorp uh, to put together a purchase agreement to purchase the 70 acres with Unicorp keeping this 35 and selling us the 35 acres adjacent to our campus. This will allow us to continue to expand and to keep Greenwood as our North American headquarters. Uh, we are also very excited about the potential for complimentary uses for our employees, uh, restaurants, shops, etc. So thank you all. Thank you. There's one person online. 
they wanting to speak? I guess not. No, no uh, to speak. Thank you. Is there anybody here uh, to speak against this remonstration? Seeing none, close public hearing. Questions along? I have a question. Okay, go ahead. To me, it looks like a little oddly shaped for red lines. Is that going to hinder your development in any way? Um, I mean, that's, that's definitely been taken into consideration um, with US 31 running on an angle. It does get a little narrowed down at the south end. Um, but the reality of it is that even though it looks pretty small down there, the reality is if you look at the um, very conceptual level images in the northwest corner, those are small retail lots. Um, if you use that for scale, there's actually quite a bit of room. Oh, it just so, yeah, it, it, it's a 23 acre parcel, okay. this, this lower southern portion. So the image is a little deceiving. Okay, thank you. I have a question about access onto uh, 31. Yes. So you have a primary road connecting in across from the uh, Kroger Shopping Center. Yes, sir. Will that be a signalized intersection or will it just be a regular intersection? How will that be handled? So our intent is that that primary access point that you can see on there, that's at an existing signal. And we've already started initial conversations with, with Mark and his team and NDOT as well. Um, and they've been generally supportive of that, um, obviously with the condition of the other traffic study, which is noted in the, the conditions for this petition as well. Very good, thank you. <clears throat> I guess one question I've got is, <coughs> there are, looks like two different legal drains running through this. Um, so is this gonna get thrown off by, if county drainage will have a say, and then <clears throat> mitigate flooding, because those will obviously flood. Yes, sir. So that's that's very much a big consideration of this. Um, and you can see we're trying to create some buffer space immediately adjacent to those legal drains. We have already started conversation with county surveyor um, and discussions about compensatory storage to offset and fill in the floodplain because there's a little bit of that along this corridor as well. But the, the first goal will be to minimize any encroachment into that space in general. Uh, but obviously with the road network, we want to make sure there's good connectivity. So that's that's definitely going to go through that area if we're continuing those conversations with county server. Is there any issue with the city property that's just east? Uh, of, of this boundary on the uh, north end? The, the lift station <clears> property. That's why yeah. yeah. so that way. It, yeah, we're, we're well aware of it. Um, we're taking it into consideration as we're, we're playing with different users that could go into these spaces, but ultimately it will remain there um, and we're gonna work around any existing pipelines that are coming out of that area as well. Anybody else, questions? I'll entertain a motion. I will oh, remind you of the statutory criteria that you are to pay reasonable regard to in making a recommendation to the Common Council on this petition. One, a comprehensive plan. Two, the current conditions and the character of current structure and uses in each district. Three, the most desirable use for which the land in each district is adapted. Four, the conservation of property values throughout the jurisdiction of Greenwood and five responsible development and growth. Now, now, now. I'll let you know. I move that the petition for zone map change to rezone approximately 33.5. Two, three acres of land located at the southeast corner of the intersection of US 31 and North Hill Road within the city of Greenwood, Johnson County, Indiana, from IL industrial large format zone to CM commercial medium format zone and CL commercial large format zone as set forth therein. Receive a favorable recommendation from this commission to the Greenwood Common Council and that the same be certified to the Greenwood Common Council in the form presented with commitments. There are five set forth in this step. Five right. conditions. Five commitment conditions. There, and yeah. We've run into this. We've run into this before. Uh, for this, it would be a commitment, not a condition. And part of that goes 
back to our state legislation. And yeah, commitments are what is placed on uh, petitions to rezone because we think that you say form of a condition. So your motion is to uh, certify it with a favorable recognition uh, with the five commitments set forth in the staff by staff. Right. If you choose to send those <laughs> forward. I'll second. I get, I get a second. <laughs> Any questions from the commission before we proceed? Seeing none. All those in favor, please show me with your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Passes <coughs> seven zero. Ben. She's <coughs> Something a month ago decided to leave a little lasting impression. So, yeah. I have all seven. The next item on the agenda is PC 2023 008, a quick trip. Landscape waiver. Not a public hearing. There will be no swearing. No swearing. Please state your name and address. Yes, um, good evening, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the commission. I'm Will Gooden, attorney for Quick Trip um, in this landscape request waiver, um, landscape requirement waiver. Um, also with us here virtually is Eric Ficus, who is the real estate project manager for Quick Trip. Um, Eric wanted me to make sure to point out the fact that he had uh, made flight reservations to travel here from um, Georgia, but uh, picked up a nasty case of pink eye. And so he oh. thought, you know, all things being equal, probably people don't want the flight. But Eric's here <laughs> um, to the extent there's uh, uh, any questions for him? But, we appreciate um, his consideration. Yeah, I, mean, I did too. As somebody who looks at someone with pink eyes, I thought you said pink tie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure there's. I, I, trust me, I didn't know his uh, situation. <laughs> <laughs> um, and my office is, uh, by the way, at 320 North Marine Street in Annapolis, Indiana. Um, so we're here on the petition uh, or on the request for the landscape waiver. We have read um, staff report. Uh, with respect to conditions uh, and would, would agree with those conditions and accept those conditions to relocate um, some of the planting in uh, other areas of the site uh, upon you know, approval of that. Um, this is at Main Street, Graham Road, um, a, a proposed, which has already received a variance um, for, the, for the use um, for a convenience store with gas. Um, Quick Trip is new to the area. Uh, new to central Indiana, the market and is um, moving in and, and uh, finds the place, uh, finds the area desirable for it. Um, as said, we're uh, happy to agree with the conditions that staff has um, indicated in its report um, and uh, in reducing the landscape planning areas from the required 10 feet to 4 feet and locating them about the building. Um, certainly be happy to answer any questions that anyone has. I'm guessing there's no one here to support your position, unless the gentleman is on. And no, uh, and Eric, unless there's specific questions for him, we uh, wouldn't okay. have anything to add. Okay. Any questions? What was the reason well, you want to reduce? I, maybe I didn't hear that part. I'm sorry. So the um, so the the, <clears throat> the layout of the building in the area um, and on the site plan, um, based on the setbacks and the impervious area, that's going to be something that will need to be dealt with. So in, in, as staff has indicated, um, 
reducing the street frontage or, re or decreasing the width of the plantings based on where the setback is in the street would, would require a, a too far of a, a movement of the building. So picking up the landscape, uh, the additional landscape to try to, uh, you know, build that up closer to the uh, requirement in other areas is, is, is perfectly appropriate. There's ample space around the rest of the site. I don't recall ever seeing a convenience store gas station with a 10 foot plant that was immediately in front of the building. Uh, but they using it as a buffer or something. Right, right. Yeah. Um, I know there was discussion about the 70% uh, impervious area limit. Are you going to be able to make, meet that? Um, I, I think we are. That um, Part of that is, is just due to the, the fact that um, uh, the right-of-way, to the center of the right-of-way, so the impervious area there with the, with the streets and the, and the concrete, also required, because this is on the corner lot, is the 10-foot uh, paved path. Um, from a connectivity standpoint that obviously we're more than happy to comply with. That eats into it a little bit more, um, but I, I believe that either either getting in compliance or close enough to get a variance from that um, is, is achievable. That's obviously a next, you know, a next step. I can probably, I can probably add some clarification to that. Um, we have got a site plan that gets us very close to the 70% um, requirement. Um, what we're looking at right now is to make sure that the uh, traffic circulates properly in the lot and uh, doesn't cause a situation where we would have trucks backing up into the right of way. Okay. And I've, I've just haven't been able to, um, as soon as, as soon as that's ready, probably within the next week and a half or so, I'll be glad to share that with staff. I'll, I'll ask our planning director, you've been working with these folks. Are, are you comfortable with the direction that we're heading in? Yeah, staff and I have been working with Quick Trip. Uh, we're comfortable with the direction that we're heading in. Uh, we've had a couple of uh, Zoom meetings with them to discuss the site. Uh, we have no issue with reducing the 10 foot foundation plantings for a gas station. Uh, like I think they kind of politely said, it's not very practical to have 10 feet of landscaping green space in front of uh, your gas station, especially one that is uh, surrounded by multiple streets. So they would have multiple 10-foot um, foundation plantings on different sides of the building. It would make more sense to relocate that green space elsewhere. Uh, right now, they are over on their impervious surface area. So just as a condition of this being reduced, we did ask that they work with staff to try and relocate that in other areas of the site. If they're not able to get that 70%, they will have to apply for a dimensional variance. That would not be with planning commission, that would be with EGA, and it would ultimately lie in their hands to either approve or deny it. Staff would be able to have a recommendation uh, for that as well. So. Well, staff does not intend on uh, recommending to, you know, have a 100% impervious site. We're going to uh, try the best to work with Quick Trip to allow for some more green space. Okay. Any <clears throat> other questions from other commissioners? Seeing none, uh, we'll entertain a motion. I move that the request of Quick Trip Incorporated for a waiver of the requirements of the Unified Development Ordinance, Greenwood Municipal Code, Chapter 10, Article 25, Division 3, Generally Applicable Regulations, Section 10-03-06, Landscaping and Buffering, G, Foundation Plantings, that specifies that commercial properties under 25,000, no, 25, sorry, Square feet shall have a minimum of 10. I should let you read it. <laughs> it's my goal. Why? Okay, 10 feet wide landscaping strip along the full length of a foundation facing the street to permit four foot foundation planting along portions of the 
proposed facades of the project facing Main Street and Graham Road because the required amount of plantings would limit the proposed uses and impact ingress and egress. Be approved, subject to the condition that the reduced room space area of planting from the foundation plantings be relocated elsewhere on the property to bring it closer to compliance with the 70% impervious area limit. And that the plan commission finds that Quick Trip Incorporated has met the criteria set forth by Greenwood Municipal Code Section 10-4-3K for the waiver for the reasons set forth in its request for waiver and as presented. Second. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any last words before we take a vote? <laughs> Seeing none, all in favor of this motion, please show your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. 8-0. Good luck, Mr. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Mr. Parker. Is there any new business from the floor? Are there any announcements? No announcements. Any business plan for two weeks? Uh, yes, we will have an agenda. Okay. <laughs> One more item of business. Move to adjourn.